So Stephen, thanks for uh, joining us tonight. Um, first things first, how are you and the family? Um, hi, thanks for having me. Um, I we're all good. Uh, thankfully, I've got um, two two wee ones at home. One's two and one's nine months. So uh, we've got the, our hands full at the moment during lockdown. So look, we're we're brave and busy, but we're we're all keeping safe and and everyone's good. So thanks very much. And um, are you working on it or what's the track? Hi, uh, so um, for for those who know, I'm uh, a youth worker. Um, and I'm working out in the community and stuff at the moment. So uh, I'm probably lucky enough that. Throughout all this, there's still a need for our for our work and and safely and sort of socially distance, we can still um, do stuff in the community. And we've been um, out delivering and working with probably most vulnerable people in our community at the moment, and and getting stuff out to them. They they help them cope and survive during lockdown, and, and getting stuff out for young people. They um they make sure that they're they keep themselves entertained and give them a bit of support during lockdown. So it's been good. It's been challenging, but it's been good. I'm sure you've been asked this a hundred times, but are you missing the football then? I think I think every day. I think every day the missus is looking at me saying, Well, what's what's wrong with you? What is what are you what are you thinking about? And I'm telling her, just missing football and especially on a on a Tuesday or a Thursday or or a Saturday, you know, when you know, nights when we're supposed to be with the boys or or we're supposed to be be playing, they're the days where we probably miss it the most and um, I'll say it was supposed to be the Irish Cup final weekend there last week and and, and that was a tough one where you know, you're thinking about what what the day could have been and how great a day it could have been if we had got there and and what it would have looked like and the party we would have had after and and the memories and the crack. But look, it's all ahead is and hopefully it'll be hopefully we'll be back at football before well before the end of the year anyway. Are you taking over anyway in terms of doing your own training and stuff like that? I have been we've been taking over and you know I'm sure everyone. Will, all the boys up and down the country are, are probably the same. And I know for us at Corain, Oren sent us plenty of running they do. And know, um, they give us plenty of good ideas. And, you know, it's it's just about keeping yourself taking over because you don't know when you're going to get that call that it's going to be two weeks, three weeks, whatever it may be. But I think for, for us, I know we're, you know, most people here, here at Corain, I know are, are naturally sort of, you know, naturally sporty or athletic. And, you know, I think you have to be to be still playing football all right sort of thing. But, you know, I think for us it's important for our own bodies and our own minds and probably for everyone else as well to just keep active and you keep trying to keep a level of fitness that your that your body's used to. And I take it you think the season probably going to be over then? Um uh, in my heart of hearts I'd probably say aye, you know, I think um it would be it would be a real, you know, a real turnaround and a real sort of um a real sort of great step under this phase of, of lockdown that the government have announced. You know, I think we would have to do sort of really brilliant things to get from stage one to stage five relatively quickly. So um if the season's over, it's over and that'll be a disappointing thing. You know, I would love it to be played out, but if it's over, it's over. But it's just about obviously boys at the top making sure that it's ended the right way and um, you know, trying to keep everyone happy. And I don't know if you can do that, but obviously to the best of their ability, hopefully they can keep as many people happy as possible and for us, we just want to get back to playing football when it's when it's safe to do so. And if it is over, uh, and we're second and back into Europe and the one the league cup, it's a successful season for. Um, I think if if you had a said in in July when you know when we were out in the back pitch and we were out working hard and running and and Owen had just come back and we're coming off the back of a tough season and you know a tough set of circumstances, I think if you had a told us we were going to win a cup and get into Europe. I think we would have. You know, we would have bit your hand off, and we would have been probably pretty delighted with that. But I think you know, once the season panned out, and you know, we, the boys just started getting the ball rolling again, and, and that momentum starts building, and you know, we start dreaming of what else could be. You know, once we, once we had obviously left at the league cup, and you know, we we felt that second place was was where we were at, and we were more than deserving to be in there. You know, whatever maybe seven games it was left to go, plus the Irish Cup. You know, we were sort of dreaming of of what it could have been. But I think on the face of it, if it is. And that's with all being well and European qualifiers going ahead and we're in Europe and, and it goes like that, then I think yeah, maybe we'll we'll take it as a successful season and, and something to build on for next year. And you spoke there about Oren coming back last August in July. What sort of difference did he make? Like how like how how do we go from finishing sixth to being the being the challenge of the top of the league? What was that? <laughs> you know what, that's that's one of those questions that that, that people tend to ask and, and they always seem to say like there's no way one man made made such a big difference, and there's no way. And but I think um, 
for anyone who's played for Owen or anyone who's worked with Owen will will understand how um how how good he is at his job and in a sense that in terms of man managing a squad and a group of people, I think he's he's excellent and he, he can just lift the whole group of people and, and sort of just drag them in the same direction. And for us whenever you know, whenever whenever he left it was tough for, for players and tough to change and stuff and I think um a lot of things happen maybe behind the scenes that, that probably not everyone's as privy or, or would understand, but you know, the, the changes and stuff for whatever reason doesn't work. But I think when Owen came back he he just sort of struck the back day they what what he knows and what he's good at and what we as a group knew and what we as a group were good at and you know, I think just everyone was just ready to I think after especially after a tough season as well, you know, I think when you go from the highs of the season before and then you go to maybe they struggle a bit the in the next year and, and not winning games consistently, I think, you know, you're you're sort of an open book in, in the sense that you're ready to, to jump back in and, and go away to something that you feel will be successful. And obviously one came back haven't been successful before and you know, for for us who have been with him before, um, we were more than more than eager to, to get going and we knew what he wanted and what he demanded and we were ready to go and for the new boys they probably heard a wee bit about how good he was and, and how great it was they were with him so for them they were they were excited to get going as well so there was a nice a nice freshness when he came back I know um, I know he, he spoke about how he maybe struggled at the start and, and how he felt coming back but for us as a group I think it was you know we didn't sort of see much of that we just seen the balls of Owen coming back and, and the way he works and, and we all just sort of jumped on board and I think what epitomizes him the most I think is that we played uh, Moyola in the first game I think it was our first pre-season game from right and um, and for most for most managers I think and for most players and staff and whatever going to Moyola away for your first sort of pre-season game you're probably thinking I'll just go here get a feel of the ball go through the motions and we'll you know, we'll just take over where we got there and we got in the change room, the gaffer and the end of the team and he he, he, he set us a challenge. I'm not I'll not say what he said or, or how he said it, but he, he he set out a challenge that for that game he wanted X, Y, and Z. Um and our focus from that day was Cuthenville, the first game of the season and, and the way he set that challenge turned a pre season game against Moyola where boys might feel like they can go through the motions or just get back in the flow things or and get on the ball. They being an important game, being a real big building factor for our season ahead, and being really important for what Owen wants to set out, what he wants to do. So, from that minute, I just think everyone was hooked again. You know, just hooked on that whatever, whatever you say goes, and whatever way, whatever you want us to do, we'll follow sort of thing. And I think that mentality has just served us so well throughout the year. And you had a, a wee frustrating, frustrating part of the year. You picked up an injury, um, but you came back obviously in the sun of the And how did you like playing on there? <laughs> I think maybe the less said about that, the better. But um, it was frustrating for me. I I think um, the the actual injury itself, um, you you are partly to blame. Um, I you know I'd been sent off on a Saturday against Balmina, um, and the gaffer had been looking us up to do a wee but an extra jump session. We we looked in Chris in the gym, and you know it was supposed to be the week before, but for me it, the way times worked out, it had to be that that Tuesday. So. I had been sent off on the Saturday, went up and done the gym session on the Tuesday. Um, and then there was a, an extra gym session on before training had started. And, and with being sent off and knowing that I wanted to do a wee bit extra, a few boys like yourself were at me to get involved and do the session. So I've done the session um, and there was probably a bit too much plyo work on it in terms of jumping and working and um, a lot of leg work. And then I went to training that night then. Um, you know, I think I went for a bite to eat with you and then we went I uh, went to training and um I felt a pop in my calf in training. So I was probably down to do, doing about too much. I'd done a wee bit on the Sunday then or, or a big bit on the Sunday because I'd been sent off and you know, it was just really frustrating for me and then I'd try to get back probably a bit too soon and crusaders away. I went out in the warm up, uh, again, probably done a wee bit too much, um and that sent me back and it was a a worse injury than I expected to be, you know, and, and for me, for anyone who knows me, I'm I'm probably I'm not the best person to be around when I'm not playing. And you've heard me on a Saturday st- standing on the sidelines, and I'm just I'm just tough to be around whenever I'm not playing. But um, 
look, it was a long road back, and um, Oran was brilliant. Maybe when I was coming back, you know, it would have been easy for him. They throw me in around Christmas and asked me to play centre half and play a big volume of games. But he, he really looked after me and he, he helped me build minutes and stuff. And then coming back in, in midfield, he just, he was a bit of needs must. You know, he had, I had to get to the stage where I was ready for 90 minutes and I was ready to sort of play well and, and get going. And um, Jarvie had obviously picked up that injury. And then I think we maybe got a suspension or two as well. Ben had pulled the hamstring as well. Just so happened, he said to me, do you want to go on and do a job? And, only knows me if he asked me to play up front I would have said I if he asked me to play right wing I would have said I if he even asked me to play nets I think I would have said I as well but um, but I look I went down and I, the worst thing that probably happened to me was that I done well in the first game against Glen <laughs> that was probably the worst thing that happened because then he, I, think he, I think he was convinced then that it's grand he can do it in the cup final and, um, and then obviously I played on there in the cup final but I think a wee blessing in disguise was was Trainer probably getting injured and Mo went there back and I went in the centre half and I felt really comfortable and then obviously Jarvie came on and played pretty well and look, it was probably a, this this sort of um, pandemic has probably come at a, a bad time for me in the sense that just right up until before I had played probably five or six games in a row just really starting to feed myself again and starting to feed fit after an injury and then obviously after bad media then we we start playing so look it's tough but and and in between it's been a brilliant season and the boys have been fantastic you know I think we've got some real some real good players and I think this year I've sort of really stepped up and I think as a group and as as a group of players we knew players like Adam Mullen and stuff who we knew you're good enough and we knew you're good footballers who maybe from the outside looking I maybe haven't got the credit they deserve but it's been great to see a lot of players this year who maybe haven't got credit before, have been getting a lot of credit and stuff from the fans and, and a lot of recognition that they deserve. So it's been great. It's been a good season for, for us as a group so far. And for me personally, it's been a bit tough um, being on out and being injured. But um, hopefully now that's one thing that uh, when we get back from, from this, everyone should be fit and ready to go, including Ben and stuff. So, uh, so it's good. We're looking forward to going back. Uh, two questions in one. Uh, as a centre half, you must be impressed with how Aaron Canning's been this season. And to talk us through that uh, relationship with him in the back with Adam Mullen, because sort of they're two known fullbacks, but whenever they went in the middle, obviously when you were right, they, they didn't put a foot wrong, did they? No, they didn't, to be fair. Uh, so the first one on Snowy, Snowy, he, he's a strange one, Snowy, and in, in that if, if, Snowy could, if Snowy could play the game in second gear, or playing second gear, if Snowy could run um, at half pace and get the ball, He'll run at half pace and he will not sprint until he needs to sprint. He'll not overexert himself until he needs to do it. But he's it's just part of the player he is and and, and he's just he's just a really good footballer and I think uh, moving from, from full back to centre half done the world of good. I think he, he gets to see a lot more of the, the game in front of himself and he he doesn't have to bomb forward and because God knows he hates running up and down that way. <laughs> I think there was a few times last year where Rodney was at him they, they sort of bomb on and get involved in the attack and you could hear him shout over there's no chance I'm running up there like <laughs> he, but it, it suits him he's just you know, he reads the game really well and I think um, I think until you play against him probably as a striker or you play with him as a player you probably won't appreciate how good of a, of a player he is you know there's times when in games you can go through and probably you're so focused on your own game that you don't notice how someone else is playing or how an opposition, so for example, you might not notice how an opposition fullback's playing or an opposition centre half unless they're playing really, really well, really, really bad. But they play with they play with Snowy. Snowy's got this great calmness on the ball and on top of that he's a good footballer, you know, he's got good technical ability. He could you know he he could do a job on midfield if he liked running a bit more. Um but he just, he just the, the running and the work on there is just too much for him. So he just, it doesn't suit him. But in training and stuff, he'll tell you he's a striker. He'll tell you he's a midfielder. But, um, but he's done really well. And he's, he deserves all the plaudits coming his way this year, especially. You know, I think he, he genuinely has been fantastic. I think for my money, I know there's not too many centre-halves who've, who've been at his level this year. Anyway. So, um, and then for, for Moan, Moan, everybody knows. As a group, and then we've known Mons a good footballer for a long time, you know. And, and Adam's probably one of those players that I was just talking about, where you know he, he plays, and as an opposition player, you might just feel like he just three games and you don't turn to notice him. But when you play with him and you realize how reliable he is and how good he is, and again, another one who's so calm on the ball because he's been um, a fullback for a long time and he's played left back, you know, he, he didn't get a lot of credit for that, for that last year where he played left back for large numbers of games and, and doesn't put a foot wrong and 
again another one that probably you know, Rodney shouting at him or oh, go and get involved and go and shouting I'm alright I'm alright here I'll just defend I'm alright I'm happy here but um, but he he's good at his job he knows what he's what he's doing and, and moving on the centre half you know we, Mon's very smart in the sense that for example, if for anyone who see me play, I I enjoy a fight or I enjoy wrestling with a centre forward or whatever. And Mon's the type of player that he's just a wee bit too too coy for that. Where he'll, he if he's not going to want to fight, he, he'll not get involved in it, and he'll he'll maybe step back and nickel ball in a second touch or or he'll maybe knock it off their toes. And he's just done so well. And for the two of them, they step on there um, and play together and do so well together. It's brilliant. Um, and again, it it just shows probably. The fifth of the one has in the both of them, um, playing them on there, and then it also shows um, how much confidence one can give you um, when they mix your job as simple as they mix it, um, and how much you can trust you. And you know the two boys have done really well. So again, for me, that's an all challenge when we come back. They they try and get in the team because the two boys have been have been brilliant all year, and um, again they deserve all the credit they've got. And uh, the January transfer window won't let the week. I know he brought a Matthew, so I wonder when he's producing straight in. How big a difference is he seeing with this program? I think, see, uh, people always sort of seem to say it that you need to, you know, each window, you need to bring in a couple, they even freshen it up. And I think as as the window was going on, you know, there's probably a wee bit of talk among the boys like, are we going to get someone? Is he going to bring someone in or not? They could be doing me one or two or. You know what do we need sort of thing, and um, I think getting Kurt look Fatsy came on a wee bit early. You know we met Fatsy early, and, and Fatsy uh, he's a, he's a good fella, and he's good to have around the change room, and he, he's darn trainer's mate, so that tells you all you need to know about him. Um, but he's been he's been good, and he's been fresh, and, and Fatsy's sort of only stepping up the level, so he's hungry to learn and improve, and and that was a good boost at the start of the wonder. But then as the wonder went on, you know, and this is this is just being honest, as a group of players, we were probably wondering is. Body or are we going to sign anyone as a group? You know, we could probably be doing one or two or whatever it may be. And um, to get that wee boost at the end of the two boys coming in, I think was was really good. And then I think from then, training then just sort of step up a gear where Stuart he came in and he was hungry and he was really enjoying it and he's full of enthusiasm. And then Curtis has come in and you know, we're playing small sided games and he's scoring two or three goals. And boys are all that thinking, what's, what's going on here? Like, no, because. Um, we have a couple of strikers here in training you wouldn't know what they are sometimes or might go off and play centre half sometimes you wouldn't know but uh, Curtis has come in and he's and he's he's been good he's been like Ant in training he's been hungry and um, he's been scoring different types of goals you know and, and obviously playing against Curtis you realise you know you understand his movement's good you, know, you need to stay close to him that he can he always pops up with goals and um, and then being able to train him and see sort of the difference that he that he it's just a different type of striker than maybe what we've already got and, and just to see the way he trains and the way he, he he's just really single-minded on goals is, is great and it's good to see. So look, it was a great wee boost for us um, and I think to be fair to the two boys, um, I think they started pretty well. I know Curtis has been carrying an injury but I thought he came on the cup final and made a real big difference. Genuinely, I thought you know he, he was a real big um, a big factor in us getting over the line in that cup final because I thought once he came on, the ball sort of really stuck up the pitch and he gave Billy Joe a lot to think about in his movement and and sort of nudging him off the ball and stuff. I thought it was great. And, and Stuart, he's just probably unlucky that he was cup-tied. Unlucky that he was cup-tied for the Irish Cup. But I thought he's done really well in the league games he's played in. He's gave, you know, he's gave us that extra wee dimension and that, just that raw piss and that sort of you know, ability to maybe do a wee bit unexpected. That... Um, it's been really good and, and look, he's, a, he's a good lad and he works really hard so I think the two boys have done well and they've sort of mixed them with the group really well we've got a good group in the change room and they seem to be enjoying it so far so hopefully when we get going again whether that's new season or the end of this season the two boys will be able to kick on um, Charles, we obviously link up to the big, big highlight of the season so far Charles, so that, you know, it seems like getting in a half game at one each I, personally I thought we were winning because we were so firm in the first half I thought mm-hmm. so did you sort of view that second half and just once we scored, we look comfortable now, you know? Uh, well, I think um, for a large group uh, or for a large sort of, a large part of that team who, who won the cup final has been at the club for a couple of years, you know, and I think especially on their own in my, in my first season and, and this season again, we've got that real, um, that real strong mentality where we understand as a group top four 
90 minutes of a football game, but you, you can never be on top. But we've got that real mentality back where that's okay if we're under pressure, we can deal with it, we can struggle up because we know that we're going to get through it and we know we're going to get out the other side of it. So, for as poor as we were um, in the first half, there was still that air of calmness around us that that's okay, let's get to half time, let's talk about it at half time, get through it, and then we'll come out the second half and, and we'll get chances to win the game. And um, it was definitely a poor first half, and I think. Um, I think Crusaders maybe just started that wee bit better and I think the goal that we conceded is probably a wee bit uncharacteristic for us. You know, Chris, there's not many times I've seen Chris Jones must kick a ball and, um, you know, Jamie's gone on and finished it well, but there was no real panic from us without without playing well. We were still calm enough to know that let's just get the half-time. If it's even one not half-time, we would have been happy enough. Um, and then we get on half-time and, and that's where Owen earned his money, in my opinion. You know, he's probably one of the best I've work with anyway that at half time in terms of how he, how he can analyse maybe the first half and, and make changes for us to win the game and you know he, he, he was brave and honest at half time and, and told us what we needed to hear and a few boys um, weren't playing well enough and, and he let them know and you know our group strong enough mentality wise that, that when the gap are saying you're not playing well enough there's no going on their shell or whatever it's I'll go out and show you or I'll go out and show that I should be playing and I should be playing well and to be fair I think Second half, James was one of those who went and done that, and you know he's obviously went and scored the winner in a cup final. And, you know we were all delighted for James, especially missing the Irish Cup and um, you know the injury they sustained and and getting fit and getting back and what he's come through and stuff and how much it means to him. So um, it was brilliant then, and as you say, then I think once we scored our second goal, um, we just managed the game, and that's one of the big things that Owen Owen talks about and and how you manage the game and how you manage your mentality and how you you see out games, and I think we've been very good at doing that this season again. And um, it just felt it's strange to say, but it just if comfortable is how we felt. You know, I think we've sort of worked cruise out. You know, it's as much as it might sound obvious for anyone watching, it's just probably saying I've worked cruise out when I know what they do. But whenever you're playing against it, it can be difficult to deal with. But I think in the second half, we just really dealt with it well. We dealt with the you know, there's enough pressure on the first ball that they were trying to. Trying to have that diag that they weren't getting, you know, a free hit or an easy connection or, you know, time to pick one out. So they were under a wee bit of pressure there. Then when it was coming, we were dealing with well, maybe heading it away or making sure Owens didn't head it or getting in a position to pick up the second balls. And I think, apart from the chance at the end, I think we, you know, I think we probably defended really well and we can be proud of how we saw the game out. You know, when it, for anyone watching, I can't imagine that it was much of a spectacle. You know, if you weren't a Korean fan. Um, they enjoy, but for us, we loved it. You know, we see that sort of boiling and managing games and, you know, being ruthless. We, we enjoy that as a group and we enjoy seeing games out. And I think we well deserved it then in the end. And, and when, as I say, whenever Curtis came on, I thought he'd done really well. They, they, they just sort of changed the, changed the feel of how the game was and changed the flow of the ball going forward or coming straight back. You know, we made it stick and we made it go up. And, Whenever he was coming on, everyone was looking over the morning, are you mad? Get that Skinner boy on. But um, but no, Curtis came on. He was brilliant. Um, I'm not sure about his cup final top. But <laughs> I think he was around the wrong size. I think someone, someone got him as small. I think he was at the kit man. But, um, but no, it was, it was good. And it, again, it was another, another chance they left a, another trophy with our club. And it was brilliant. And, you know, I had had the idea that, and I had spoke to Owen about it, that, you know, London had been through so much. Um, you know, he had another one who had missed the, the cup final um, the year before and how much it meant to him. And that was his first big trophy we go in and, you know, the first chance for him to be up there. And, you know, I spoke to Owen about it and we decided that we would love it together. And that's that's the reason behind it because he, he's been through so much. You know, see to break your foot more than once and, and sort of be on the brink of, of not coming back and to do what he's done and to get back to the level that he's been at is, is brilliant and it's testament to him as a, as a player and a person and, and obviously his family and stuff around him and him being a big Korean fan I think it was just I think it was just the perfect way to end sort of the perfect evening they, you know, for us they left the cup together and, and something that we'll all remember hopefully for a long time but hopefully it'll not be the, the last trophy we're, we're left in any time soon hopefully we'll have our hands on an all couple soon uh, well, here's open as well. Um, you've been at the club obviously since 2017. You've won the Irish Cup, you've won the League Cup, played in Europe two years. Two years. Um, how would you sum up your time so far at the club? Obviously, your captain as well. Ah, uh, it's been brilliant. You know, I think um, 
when I met Orn um, a couple of years ago, we, we had a conversation about what what it might look like and what um, what my role might be f- sort of moving forward with Corain and, and who was sort of on my way and what I sort of had to do. And I felt like he, he sort of laid a challenge down for me that day. And we actually went and played range. We, we were due back on for pre-season um, on the, the Tuesday night. And I was actually away on holidays at a holiday pre-booked. And uh, we were actually playing Rangers then the Thursday. So I had come back from holidays, I know. So we came back from holidays. Um, I came back from holidays straight on the 6 o'clock on the Thursday morning. We had, uh, I think it was we getting the ferry from Marne to go and play Rangers. And, um, we're on the bus. And for anyone who knows Skinner and Doogie, Skinner and Doogie can be can be loud and they can be a wee bit sort of mad at times. And, and for anyone who doesn't know them, you can just, you can just, I don't know, you can just sort of, they can just, Amazing at times with what they come out with and what they do, and so we're on this bus and I've just signed. I don't really know any of the boys, only know the dairy boys who are there, and, and I'm thinking, what's this going to be like? And you know, I hope I enjoy it because as they move from from to shoot, where I knew everyone was really comfortable and stuff, and we're on the bus and and Dougie shouting about getting a shop stop, and we're we're going the um one the Rangers training ground, and we're we're on the way, and there's this wee shop, so we stop and they go into the shop. And, Skinner and Dougie land out with sausage rolls and crisps and they're they're laughing and joking. And I'm thinking, what the hell's going on here? And I thought, I don't know if this is for me. And you know, after after that game we go, I think we could be five dollars on it. And I was sitting thinking, like, what am I doing here? And we're like, this has been a disaster from from the moment I woke up this morning, it's been a disaster. You know, we just got pumpy rangers. Um no, oh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna enjoy it, I'm not sure if I'm gonna fall on, blah, 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 whatever it may be. And then from then and this training went on and pre-season went on. I actually probably had a bit of a poor pre-season and I was like, I don't know if this is for me. And since then, Owen just sort of, sort of just looked after me and just said, just keep going, keep going. Don't be stressed and don't be worrying. We played that, um, we played that Moonly Shield or Charlie Shield against Lumfield and they beat us 3-1. And after the game, he just sort of said to me, look, this is where we're supposed to be, this is where we want you to be, blah, blah, blah. And from that matter on, we went and played Dungy Allen the following week, I scored with Big Cluff and Bob Mudwick, played um, Cruise away in the following Saturday, scored again from there, just took off. And for me, from that minute, from probably, from probably, we'd actually been bid 7 all as well in Europe, and I was just thinking, like, what is going on here? Like, this is a disaster. And then from that minute, then probably from that um, Dungy Allen game, it just, it just sort of took off, and and I just loved every minute of it. You know, it's been it's been brilliant. You know, I, could, I don't think I could ask for any more. You know, you know, we've played in Europe. I've captain the club in Europe. We've should have won. You know, got a brilliant result out there. Probably should have won that game. Um, you know, we've had the honour of of leading the cup cup out in two cup finals. Um, you know, I got to take my daughter out in the Irish cup final. She was there when we won it. You know, we got the left that. We've had brilliant parties. We've had the best group of people. Um. You know, it's just been it's just been brilliant. You know, my for anyone who knows me, um, and and my mates and stuff, sort of outside of football, uh, my family and stuff will know how much um how how much of a good time it's for me and how much I've loved being at Corian and how much um the club has been fantastic. I think as a club as well, we've sort of grown across the last three years and probably it's gone from being before I joined, maybe sort of being happy to be in around the mix and being up there to now where We've got that mentality where we should be in the max. We should be involved in uh, cup finals. We should be involved in title races, and we should be at the right end of the league and, and playing in Europe. So it's been a brilliant, a brilliant couple of years. And I think every time I think back to that conversation we won before signing, I just think if you'd have told me that we would have played in an Irish cup final. If you had have told me we would have played in Europe once, if you had have told me, you know, I would have put your hand off. So it's been it's been a brilliant couple of years, and and hopefully. Um, hopefully it's not over not over yet for us as a group you know hopefully this journey is going to keep going on and we can keep going and being successful hopefully it's another trophy cup of trophies they had you know being greedy like we've won the league cup we've won the Irish cup you know like have like a, a league medal before I retire if, but that may be being too greedy I don't know like if I retire with these two I'll be happy but I'm hoping that there'll be a, another couple before I do and finally, obviously, the coronavirus situation as club captain. Have you been speaking to any of the players? Have the players been chatting together? Has there been anything sort of happening behind the scenes? Or? There's, there's been plenty of chat. You know, I think um, as a group, we're all sort of 
we're all sort of pretty close anyway. You know, we've been we've been chatting away in the group chat, and then obviously we we travel from a few different areas. So some of the smaller group chats have been have been brave and busy as well. And for me, I've been keeping in touch with everyone. Basically, trying to make sure that that there's you know that everyone's first of all doing a wee bit to keep themselves packing over, but more importantly that everyone's okay. You know that everyone's surviving first and foremost through through what's probably a real tough time for everybody. You know, we have boys who. Um, we have boys who live on their own. We've got boys who are, are loving with kids. We have boys who um, are with their, their families who haven't seen their friends or haven't seen their partners. Um, you know, we've got boys who um, massive social interaction. We've got boys who are missing the gym work. You know, so we've got the same as everyone else and everyone else's group of friends. And for me, it's just important that I felt like it was important that um, God, as a captain, they, they try and just keep in touch with people regular enough. They make sure that they're doing all right. And if they if they feel like they need a chat or they feel like they want to talk about something, that's important. But as a group, we've been, you know, we've been brave and, and bubbly in the group chat for the characters we've got. There's been plenty of cracking on and um we've had a couple of nights where we've we've met up and, and had a bit of crack and we had a, a couple of wee quiz nights and stuff and uh, the crack's been good and, and I think that's really important. They try and keep in touch with each other as well that you know, you sort of you don't lose that bond or you don't lose that feeling of being part of something because I think that's really important that you know whenever you're whenever you're struggling or whenever you're feeling sort of we but isolated as we're we're being advised to do that you still feel part of something and you, know, you still feel that your teammates are there for you if you need them and um and it's been good you know like there's been there's been plenty of our boys that have needed a chat and plenty of our boys who have spoke to each other and stuff and and it's great that we just keep supporting each other and you know hopefully um. Hopefully, as a as a as a group, and and hopefully throughout, um, we can get from phase one to phase three or four, whatever the first phase of sort of small group training is. I think it's phase four. You know, the sooner we get to that, the better. Where boys can start to feel a wee bit of normality again, and you know, can start seeing their mates and stuff again would be would be great. But look, it's been tough, but it's been something that I don't think anyone could have, you know, anyone could have predicted or anyone was ever prepared for or, or ready for. But I would just have to say that the club's been really brilliant with us. You know. In terms of the support and then in terms of the financial sort of aspect of it, you know, they sort of alleviated any concerns brave and early. You know, they've let us know what the plan is and, and what's going on and um and you know, so from a financial point of view, players aren't stressed and are worried and, and that's been great. And I'm sure now I know that there's been a, a meeting there recently, I'm sure now we'll get an update within the next couple of days of, of what's going on or what sort of the clubs are thinking or what's being planned. So look it's been good, it's been tough, but um Again, we're just we're just all sort of looking after each other and hoping that it'll be over sooner or later. Well, Stephen, many thanks for uh, joining us tonight, and uh, stay safe and to you and the family. No worries, good man. Just obviously stay safe yourself, and hope everyone else can can stay safe, and hopefully we'll be uh, back playing football sooner or later. Good luck.